I'd like to begin this morning by reading from the Bible. Our passage this morning comes from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. But you must continue with the things you have learned and found convincing. You know who taught you. Since childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures that help you to be wise in a way that leads to salvation through faith that is in Christ Jesus. Every Scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for showing mistakes, for correcting, and for training character, so that the person who belongs to God can be equipped to do everything that is good. This is the Word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. This morning we are continuing our worship series entitled Five for Five as we look at five essential Christian practices. Worship, study, serve, give, and share. Last week we kicked off this series by talking about the importance of worship. God has created us and called us to worship and we're thankful for the opportunities that we have to worship together, whether it's in person or it's online. And, and as Dave mentioned already, it's certainly a joy to be back in the sanctuary. It's hard to believe it's been eight months, 246 days since we have worshiped together in this space. And I think just being back in this room for a lot of folks reminds us how important worship really is. One thing we challenge everyone to do is to try to get an A in worship attendance by attending 90% of the time. And remember, online worship counts too. Uh, but we hope that you can set that as a goal for yourself because worship is so important. But this morning we are continuing our series by talking about, as Dave mentioned, the studying of Scripture. Research shows that 87% of all Americans own a Bible. 87% of all Americans own a Bible, but only 35% of Christians, not Americans, of Christians read their Bible weekly. That is a really low number. And I think it's an opportunity for us to assess how we are doing personally when it comes to reading the Bible. How might we improve and grow in our daily or weekly Bible reading? So maybe another challenge that we could add is perhaps you can try to get an A in Bible reading as well. So maybe that's an invitation to try to read your Bible every day or at least every week. I know that when I read my Bible, I enjoy reading and studying different translations of Scripture. Uh, when I'm researching and reading uh, and studying for a sermon or for a Bible study, I'll often start off with the New Revised Standard Version. The translators of this version were asked to create a translation of the Bible that was as literal as possible and as free as necessary. So it's a close translation to the original Greek and Hebrew. They tried to do as close to a word for word as they could. But I also really like Eugene Peterson's paraphrase the message. Um, this translation uses American slang. It's a more contemporary language. And so it's not a literal translation, but I think it's a really relatable Translation. I also really enjoy the Wesley Study Bible. There's a New Revised Standard Edition, but there's also a Common English Bible Edition. And uh, this Bible has a lot of great notes in it. It's got some great definitions that cover eternal life, forgiveness, grace, holiness. And it's really rooted in Wesleyan theology. It has several references to the founder of the Methodist movement, John Wesley, as well. It's a really good study Bible that I recommend. But I really like looking at all these different translations because I think I gain more insight from studying more sources. And just like there are different translations of the Bible, there are different ways of reading the Bible as well. One, uh, one of the ways that we do this is we read the Bible to gain a deeper understanding. For example, if we want to learn more about Jesus and the life that he lived, then we can read about his life in the Gospels. So we read the Bible for understanding. That's a really important way that we do that. But we also read the Bible for formation. We study the Bible so that we can listen to how God may be speaking to us through the text. And as we read, we can ask the question, how does this passage form the way that I live my life? We can also read the Bible as we pray. We can literally pray through 
the scriptures. And I think this opens up a whole new way of how we can read the Bible. This can add real value and meaning to how we look at the scriptures. It's very similar to Lectio Divina, which is Latin for divine meaning. This is where we read, meditate, and contemplate as we study the Bible. And ultimately, the Bible is the living, breathing word of God. The Bible is God's story and how we as humanity fit into that story as well. In his book, What is the Bible? Rob Bell writes this. I've been reading and studying and exploring and rereading and rethinking and giving sermons from the Bible for 25 years. And I find it more compelling and mysterious and interesting and dangerous and convicting and helpful and strange and personal and inspiring and divine and enjoyable than ever. He goes on to say this. Some people see the Bible as an outdated book of primitive, barbaric fairy tales that we have moved beyond. And then there are folks who talk about how important and central and inspired the Bible is, but then butcher it with their stilted literalism and stifling interpretations. But you, I want you to read the Bible in a whole new way. I really like the way that Rob Bell puts that. I think he's absolutely right. We, we're invited to open up this ancient and beautiful and strange book. We're invited to read it and explore it for ourselves. And as many folks have said, reading, reading and studying the Bible messes with your life. The Bible informs the way that we live out our lives and how we share in God's stories. But I think Rob Bell also hit a nerve when he said that some people view the Bible as primitive and barbaric. I think that is in part due to bad theology. There have been times that the Bible has been used as a weapon to silence women and to harm minorities and to push forward personal agendas. Sometimes people use the Bible in order to bully and manipulate others. The Bible has sometimes been misused and abused. So I think we need to acknowledge how bad theology and how bad biblical interpretation has harmed people. But as our scripture this morning says, every scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for showing mistakes, for correcting, and for training character. So that the person who belongs to God can be equipped to do everything that is good. So I think the way we interpret Scripture is incredibly important. As United Methodists, we use what's called the Wesleyan quadrilateral to gain a deeper and fuller understanding of the Bible. And I know you guys are really excited about this part of the sermon where we talk about the Wesleyan quadrilateral. But it includes Scripture, tradition, reason, and experience to help shape a faithful interpretation of what the Bible says. Scripture is inspired by the Holy Spirit, and it speaks to who God is and invites us into God's story. So Scripture is fundamental. It is so important for us as Christians. It's the most important part of the Wesleyan quadrilateral. But we also have tradition, and that's used to enhance the understanding of Scripture. So, for example, John Wesley used creeds and literature and writings to aid his understanding of the Bible. Also, experience is used to help shape a deeper understanding of God. Experience can be used by the individual as well as by the community. How have you experienced God in your own life? How does that inform the way that you read Scripture? And, of course, reason is also an important tool that is used to read, interpret, and understand Scripture. We use reason when we read the Bible. When Jesus said, if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. Now let's use reason when we read that passage of scripture. Did Jesus literally mean that? Of course not. So we use reason to influence the way that we interpret scripture. As one scholar states, Wesley remained open to new insights that might be uncovered by integration and then interacting with scripture, tradition, reason, and experience. So I think we need to look at all of these sources when we are interpreting the Bible because we are all invited to read and study Scripture 
and to deepen our faith in Christ. And we are called to do this faithfully, carefully, and I think also with the help of our community. And this doesn't just happen automatically. Sometimes we have to grapple and struggle and wrestle with Scripture. And I think we can lean on one another as we try to understand God's Word. In his book, Five Practices of Fruitful Congregations, Robert Schnazy writes, As John Wesley and the early Methodists realized, growth in faith does not come easily or automatically, but requires placing ourselves in community to learn the faith with others by becoming part of a learning, listening, serving community, we place ourselves in the circumstances that are most advantageous for growth in faith. Bible study and faith sharing are not just about self-improvement, but about setting ourselves where God can shape us, intentionally opening ourselves to God's word and call. God uses relationships to change us. In many ways, reading the Bible is a lot like physical exercise. It takes determination and dedication. And just like exercise, one of the best ways to remain faithful in reading your Bible is to join others in your community. We do this through our small groups, Sunday school classes, Wednesday Bible studies, and youth group. We really have so many opportunities, even in the midst of a pandemic, for you to join in a small group, virtually or in person. So I really hope that you can get engaged in a small group if you're not already, so that can help you grow and deepen your faith in a community. I know that I personally benefit more when I study with a group of people, especially when there are people in that group that I don't always agree with. It stretches me. It gives me a different way of thinking about things. It opens me up to a different perspective, and I think that's so important, especially in this day and age. And we can do this together. Ultimately, we are invited to allow the Bible to inform our lives in a deep and meaningful way. And it's not just about reading what God's Word says, but it's about living it out. It's about following the way that Jesus lived out his life. There's a story of a group of four pastors who were talking about their favorite translation of the Bible. That's what pastors do when they get together. They talk about the Bible and things like that, the Wesleyan quadrilaterals. Uh, but, but the first pastor in this group said, my favorite translation of the Bible is the King James Version because it's so eloquent and so poetic. The second pastor said, well, my favorite translation is the 1800s version because it's the closest translation to the Greek and Hebrew. Only a pastor would say that. The third pastor said, well, my favorite translation of the Bible is the NIV because it is the one that my congregation understands the best. And the last pastor just sat there silent for a few minutes. And then after a while, one of the other pastors asked that fourth pastor, aren't you going to say what your favorite translation of the Bible is? The fourth pastor paused for a minute and he said, my favorite translation of the Bible has to be my mother's. And the other three pastors seemed surprised at this response. And so they asked, oh, did, did your mom write a translation of the Bible? And the fourth pastor responded, no, she didn't write a translation of the Bible, but she lived it. And so, my friends, may you take up this book and read it. May you open yourselves up to how God may be speaking to you. May you grow and go deeper in your love for Christ, and may you live it out in your own life each and every day. Amen.